Good morning. We are continuing in Romans 6 and coming off of verse 11 where we start to turn toward the imperatives where we read in verse 11, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Well, we get a strong imperative in verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Now, this is a really important verse for a few reasons. We've seen that positionally, in reality, we are dead to sin and we've been made alive to God. Our first step in gospel obedience we looked at is yesterday is that we would um, reckon ourselves, uh, look at the ledger and see that we have been and credit to ourselves, if you will, this posture where we are dead to sin. We gotta, we gotta think of it as so. We have to get our mental framework, our dispositional framework, um, in the right posture so that we realize and we can function from a place of being dead to sin. Now, in light of that, or the next step to that is that we would not let sin reign in our mortal body to make us obey its passions. See, sin, while you're dead to it, if you give it a foothold, if you give it room to move, it has the potential to ravage you. It can overcome you. It can lay hold of you in such a way that it begins to rain. Not rain as in R-A-I-N, pouring down, but rain as in R-E-I-G-N. It can set up a kingdom and it begins to rule you. But see, it's not to be your master. Rather, you are to master it, much like the proposition that God shared with Cain um, and, and just east of Eden, right? Where there's this opportunity where sin could master him or he could master it. Here, we're told, don't let sin reign. Now, interestingly, where will it set up shop? The verse tells you, in your mortal body, to make you obey its passions. Here's what happens. As sin comes to reign, and if it gets a hold of control, it gets in your mortal body. He means physical body. Think of Job saying something like, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look at a woman. Why does he use that language? Because there's a habituated sense of our members, our body, where we begin and, and we actually wire our brain at times to get into bad thought patterns. We let our eyes by habit set towards certain things. We can let our, 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 our bodily impulses raise up in some reactive kind of component. We have to be careful that we don't let sin into our lives in such a way that it forms habituated sin, even all the way down to our physical bodies. We have to make sure that we are guarding our heart, and by guarding our heart, we guard our whole lives. So don't let sin reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Because guess what happens to, with habits? Habits become hard to break because you end up having to unlearn the habit, you have to habitually turn from the habit, and you really have to get a new habit. And so guard yourself because before you know it, you can habituate something and it becomes second nature to you and you don't want that in your life, that's not how a Christian ought to live. So don't let sin reign in your mortal body. Have a good day.